All right, hello everyone. The Snake Rocks here, and welcome back to Valhalla. Now, last episode, OBS freaked out a whole ton. So, I hope that doesn't happen this episode because, um, thankfully, I didn't lose any key moments last recording. But yeah, here's fingers crossed that OBS doesn't freak out again. But more importantly, last episode stuff really was about to get real. Um, we had like. White Knights going rogue after this anarchist group leaked a bunch of details. I really, really hope Say is alright, because I like her. Hell, I hope everyone involved is alright. Now, if I remember correctly, we had to stay the night at the bar. Yep, rise and shine. Alright, let's just jump straight into it. Rise and shine. Good morning. It's 11 a.m. though. That's morning for me on the weekends, and any other day. I know that feeling. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them, at least. How so? Zaibatsu Corps' president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. You make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there are still some bad apples out and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, I really hope Say's alright. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. Yeah, I wonder if Say is okay, Jesus Christ. Should we be worried about Jill? That kid knows how to take care of himself. Does he? I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say even safer when he is... Dafer, dare I say even safer wherever he is than here? I sure hope so. Are we going to work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, alright. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. Okay, we've got a bit of a uh, change of scenery here. Um, and here we are. Home sweet home, thanks a lot. Hey boss, wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit. Mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. To more beer? I was gonna say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. Okay, whatever that means. Come on in then. Excuse me. Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me though, smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Say, how's the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing the Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. Oh right, boss, you're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist, I have this hoodie from some time ago and it was too big for me. Why buy it then? It was dirt cheap. Right. Wait, w where did you get this one? Dunno, some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing. It's just like one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use, it just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want, I never use it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17. Fair enough, 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. Uh, Alright. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. Ellipses. Oh, hello. Ellipses. Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just four. He's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home, we had a bear. Ah, uh, I s- What? 
Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. R right. Hmm? This picture here isn't something you see every day. What, me taking such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, um... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabrielle, her sister. Huh, is this pic recent, or... Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. Ellipses. You look exactly the same. I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. <sighs> Let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. I just went away, haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing so, such a thing. And you look so happy in the pic. Why have her pick out like this then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there watching you, protecting you. I don't know, I felt nostalgic, then miserable. Ellipses. I'll just put this away. Ellipses. I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm? What's that on the table? Il exclamation point. Looks like an envelope. It's nothing! Nothing! Now, please, give that to me. Lope. Alright. I saw nothing, don't worry. Ellipses. Anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Damn, you have lots of beer. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more at, are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one's more of a pilsner. In English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. Dunno, it doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <laughs> is this one made with that, um... What was the name of the base liquid you use at the bar again? Nutriogenic diochemic di what? Nutriogenic dichometrical lidogenol or NDL. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the maiden kiss polluted water supplies. The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And is this one made with it? Wait, can I just click can I just click this at any time? I can. Let's see. Yep, here it is, near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see. And I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere around. Do you want some of it? Will you have some too? Not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Dunno, what with being my boss and all. I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Aw, oh, that's nice. Besides, you and Jill are always so diligent and responsible that I'm boss in name only anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. I'm still wondering why you did it, though. Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave you... Dunno a dildo-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. <laughs> Although no one comes here anyways, so it's kind of pointless. What? 
No steamy nights of passion? Not since a year ago, I think. And I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. Well, that's a nice offer, Dana. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. A not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me dildo face? That's what friends are for. <laughs> hey boss, be honest with me here. About what? Who's Jill exactly? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Who the fuck is he? Oh yeah, that. Well, I have a couple of ideas. I know for certain that Jill was in the Hong Kong riots and he took part in the anti-riot force before defecting. That should give me a clue as to who he is, but... But? So far, I've only found out about one such defector, and he didn't leave Hong Kong for at least four years. I also know for certain that Jill was in England and France during that time frame. And it's always like that, when I, have a, when I think I have a clue as to who he is. Something else comes up that, con that contradicts the evidence. That guy's troublesome. A bit, yeah. I wonder if Jill's alright. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Jill so much though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third? He absolutely hates bell pepper. <laughs> oh wow, he does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He... what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right. Levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He... huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him, so I decided to take him at face value. I'd judge him for what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional sudden escape escapade, it was escapade. I think I pronounced it escapade or something like that last time. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know? How so? Well, with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. I can't remember her name. Alma? I was gonna say Armitage. She's a nice girl, you know? She is. I don't think she's young enough to be called a girl. Says the girl who's eternally 17. In any case, she's really lovely. When you hear her speak of her family, she speaks with such love. Her face just brightens up. It makes me kind of jealous that she has such a close relationship with them, to be honest. You have bad relations with your family? Not bad, but I'm not exactly close to anyone aside from my mom, dad, and aunt. But back to Alma, I'm really hoping she finds a nice guy to settle with. I mean, she's so bent into finding one, I can't help but want her to succeed. Ah, I see. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes to it with such childish excitement. I've kind of noticed that, too, but then again, Lilim can be weird. You think? Lilim operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or, re or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they're... different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm, I didn't see it that way. 
Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Lilim get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilim is a bit weird, though. It is? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilim doesn't convey the image of automatons. I mean, there's a different game that has dolls, but um, we'll worry about that some other time. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them retarded, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilim? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lilim are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Ooh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. Ellipses. See? Like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feel silly when you say out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything, from the dolls to the costumes to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies. And yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kids show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there. And that is the problem. Back then, I was obsessed with Jules. I sang the songs dressed like her. I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. That's besides the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules. I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune, the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. And yet, it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. So Jill, what kind of guy was your grandpa? He was rough around the edges, the kind of guy that means well even if he says otherwise. He seemed to have a soft spot for me though. One moment, he was congratulating my dad by berating him a little. And the next he was playing with me. My dad worked a lot and my mom was always traveling, so I spent most of my childhood with him. Can I ask how he died? Out of old age, my dad says his last words were something like, Fucking scientists created talking mannequins, but they still can't let you upload your brain. Why the question? I'm curious about you. Really curious. I just realized that even though we see each other almost every day, I know very little about you. Oh. From what you tell me, though, seems your grandpa's personality rubbed off on you a bit. I've heard that once since I was a kid, actually. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind, you're included in this circle, too, so any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time, a red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. 
It's called Nirvana, and if you thought this city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. Anne means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved to the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nirvana B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said it was... I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave? That aside, let's see. Friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San, the Neo San Francisco police force. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Anyways, aside from you, Jill, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, hmm. I guess there are a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out with the pl was it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Jill, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know. Hey boss, what will you do when the bar closes? I don't know, maybe I'll take a friend's offer of working with her. I was also thinking about going back home and helping with things there. Or maybe going traveling for a while. I see. Oh, but don't worry, bureaucracy's slow as fuck, so they won't close the bar for quite a while. Better enjoy being there while you can. Yeah, maybe. Will you be visiting me in whatever bar I end up working in? I have a bone to pick with the guy that supervises the bar I'm planning to get you transferred to. I go there even though I have virtually no reason to. With you there, I'd have something pleasant to look forward to. Um, you're sending me to someone you have problems with? If I have to trust another bar owner, it's certainly him. He's actually a pleasant boss from what I've seen. The fact that he and I have tendency to go at each other's throats is an unrelated matter. I'll trust you on that one then. Don't worry, maybe I can get you a bracelet made out of wood pieces from the bar's counter or something. Um, we'll see. Hey, I'll tell you what. When the bar closes, let's both take a vacation. Go on a trip. That'll clear your mind a bit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, hello. What is going on here? What is this now? Can I click through this? Apparently not. Oh, wow! Chapter 2, Armaja. Armaga? Amarga? What? I didn't get a chance to read that thoroughly. I kind of blanked out. Huh. Alright, so I guess that's the end of the day. Your electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th. Please make sure you have the $8,000 needed. Jill is curious about a Daruma she saw. Getting one will prevent her from being too distracted. Daruma, huh? Cracked Daruma. A Japanese souvenir that has seen better days. Still has a vintage charm to it. 450, not bad. Alright, let's return. Jill bought what she wanted and is pleased with herself. She will surely focus at work. Cool. Oh, boss left the hoodie anyway. Alright, and, um, well, I guess that's about the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I'll leave the episode off here. Um, maybe I'll record another one after this, because this one felt unusually short. Um, but anyway, that's about it for Valhalla. Uh, or at least for this episode of Valhalla. Um, I cannot wait to get started on Chapter 2. I love this game. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's about it. I've been Lee Snake Rocks. I will see you all later. Thank you for watching.